Tonight, a wildfire is forcing the entire town of Ola, more than a thousand residents, to be evacuated. A young mother is Little Rock's 27th murder. Police have not identified a suspect. I'm Katherine Yancey. I'll have the details. And the Bauxite mayor is facing a recall election Why residents are up in arms. Working for you in the spirit of Arkansas, this is Channel 7 News at 6 in high definition. A wildfire is burning near the Yell County, Perry County line, forcing more than a thousand people to evacuate. Good evening and thanks for being with us. I'm Beth Hunt. Christina Munoz is on assignment. And I'm Scott Inman. Authorities are going door to door tonight, warning residents in Ola and Berta that they need to leave. Channel 7's Justin Lewis has been on the scene for more than an hour and a half tonight, and he is live with the latest. Justin, what can you tell us? Well, Scott, in that about an hour and a half we've been there, this thing has gotten very serious. This fire continues to spread. The last update I had was well over uh, 300 acres on fire. I think it's safe to say it's actually spreading more. We're on Highway 10, as you can see down there, kind of through the smoke. This is where uh, many fire officials and local authorities are trying to stop this thing. It was just minutes ago as we stood here and watched flames pretty much roll over this highway like a bowling ball. They came through very quick, very fast. We were there for a few minutes trying to set up this live shot you're watching, and they told us we had to get out. They, there were residents down there with us. They said, if you're not with the fire crews, you've got to get out, and, and they were exactly right. I'm glad we moved uh, about a half a mile down the road, and since we've been here, we're hearing loud cracks, loud pops, loud booms. There are homes in this area, lots of timber. A local resident also told me there's that fireworks storage place we were mentioning earlier that could have uh, could have been set on fire there as we heard some of the cracks and booms still trying to confirm if there has been any structure damage. So we'll continue to get you updates and have more tonight on Channel 7 Nightside. Back to you guys in the studio. Now just some incredible video there. Justin, stay safe and we'll check with you at 10 o'clock. Thanks very much. Meantime, this news just into our newsroom. The unlicensed school nurse in Searcy we have been telling you about now has been fired. A school board meeting underway tonight and the board returned from executive session minutes ago announcing their decision to fire Suzanne Johnson from her job at Sydney Diener Elementary. Johnson worked for the district for six years before the school discovered she never received her license. But with just a few phone calls, we uncovered virtually none of her references were legitimate. So how exactly did the district end up hiring her in the first place? Janelle Lilly is at that meeting and we'll have the latest in a report at 10 o'clock. A suspicious death in Little Rock has been ruled a homicide. It marks the 27th murder in the capital city so far this year. Police are following up on possible leads but say they don't have a suspect right now. Channel 7's Katharina Yancey joins us from the Little Rock Police Department with this story tonight. Hi Katharina. Hi, Beth. I spoke to a family member this morning that says that they are in deep shock and they're not ready to go on camera yet because they do not want to hurt the investigation to find out who did this. When a concerned family member stopped by 25-year-old Alexis Esau Kabir's home at about 7.20 a.m. Tuesday, police say the relative found her lying on the floor in blood and had a head injury, lifeless. However, we're not going to divulge the exact injuries uh, that she did sustain. To make sure it was not an accident, the medical examiner's office performed an autopsy and concluded Kabir was murdered. Therefore, we will be working this death as a homicide. Sergeant Cassandra Davis would not confirm or deny that that relative who called police has been ruled out as a suspect, only saying no one has been ruled out. We did receive some initial information. We did follow up on that information. However, we have not been able to develop a suspect or make an arrest based on any of that information. The house on Hutzel Road in southwest Little Rock does not have a furniture, but there are schemes inside. Police say the victim was married, but neighbors tell Channel 7 the young mom has a toddler, recently moved in, and they were not aware of a man living in the home. Police do confirm that the victim does have a child and he was not home during the murder. Scott, Beth. Well, Katharina, I know one of the first things that police look at when they're investigating a murder is whether or not there was forced entry at the house. What did they say about that today? 
Well, you know, when we drove around the house today, you could see that there were some windows open and police say when I asked them about if there was any evidence of forced entry, they say no comment right now because they really do want to close in on the suspect and not divulge uh, details of the investigation. Okay, Catherine Yancey, keep us, keep us posted. Thank you. The mayor of Boxite was not scheduled to run for re-election until 2014. But thanks to more than a quarter of his constituents, he'll have to duke it out to keep his job this November. Channel 7's Roger Suzanne is live in Boxite with the reason why. Roger. Hi, Scott. You know, if your kids squabbled the way some Boxite politicians did, you'd probably put them in timeout. Well, some voters here in Boxite now could do the very same thing to their own mayor. The question is whether it would be a good idea and the answer depends on who you ask. Boxside of course is a very small town, less than 500 people actually live here, but two residents really brought this issue to a head. Mayor Johnny McMahon and his nemesis, former city councilwoman Debbie Purifoy. The two sides admit this has gone beyond politics, it's personal. Purifoy recently cobbled together enough signatures on a petition she was circulating to force a recall election this November. That means Mayor McMahon will have to fight to keep his position. Purifoy says she is not pleased with McMahon's job performance, but she is also ticked off that he mailed out campaign literature that he admits he can't prove it. No matter what happens in November, it's clear this situation will continue to be nasty. Well, I'll refer to him as John Quixote. I believe he's living in an alternative reality, and he's not following the law. He's treating people shabbily. She's uh, harsh when she comes to the city council meetings. She speaks out. She's very rude and very negative. She's an extremely negative person. Uh, I don't think she has a real life. And there you have it. By the way, the charges against Purifoy were dismissed, but I doubt this ill will is going anywhere anytime soon. Beth, back to you. Okay, Roger, Suzanne, and live tonight, thank you. Well, the lack of rain means many lawns aren't growing, so many Arkansans aren't mowing. But when you do need to mow, you need your mower to work. That's the focus of tonight's 7 on Your Side dispute, and Jason Peterson joins us to explain. Jason? Beth, we often advise people to get a second opinion. Here's a perfect example of why. Lately, when Linda Rapp mows her Cleburne County lawn, she produces more dust than lawn clippings, but she wouldn't have been able to mow it at all if she had trusted the opinion of Tommy Bird of Enola, the lawnmower man. When her five-year-old Troy-built Super Bronco wouldn't start this spring, she found the lawnmower man's ad in her Sunday paper. It stated that Bird would come to her home and if a mower is beyond repair, there's no charge. I didn't know what was wrong with it, and I, you know, if it was something major. I didn't want to have to pay. Bird claims he found several problems and concluded that it was time to buy a new mower. He suggested Rapp take better care of her next mower and that the mower had been ruined by abuse. The lawnmower man charged $160 for his time, fuel, and opinion. Did he do any work at all in the mower? No, I came back and my lawnmower was just sitting here by the trash right here. Wayne's repair shop in Heber Springs later picked up the mower, fixed it, and returned it for $100. It's now running fine. Just be cautious of this man, because I don't think he's an honest man. Now, we did visit with Tommy Bird by phone. He claims he changed that ad, but didn't tell Linda Rapp because, well, she didn't ask. We asked Bird to do an interview with us. His reply, I've seen the work you do. You cause a lot of problems for people, and you can kiss my, well, let's say posterior. Then he hung up on me. <laughs> You've heard it all, Jason. Thanks a lot. Well, coming up, Razorback fans have a new reason to cheer for the Minnesota Vikings. You probably know why. At 616, we check in with Christina Munoz, who is live tonight in Minneapolis as former Hog standouts Greg Childs and Jarius Wright begin training camp. And as the temperatures continue to rise, Ned says a new front could bring some rain chances. He has details in his forecast on the other side of this break. Stay with us. Channel 7 News at 6, brought to you by Cleo's Furniture and USA Drug. Skycams, sponsored by Middleton Heat and Air. From the weather team with the most experience, this is Channel 7 Chief Meteorologist Ned Permy. Well, our five live Dopplers not showing any rain around the state, but guess what we are showing? That wildfire, the smoke from it being picked up on the high sensitivity of our radar right now, showing you that uh, wildfire near Ola, and it continues the upper level winds and the surface winds are from the south southwest, so it's blowing that smoke on toward uh, the uh, northeast, as you can see. But
but that is the uh, area right there where the uh, fire is actually near Ola, and this is the smoke that's being blown away from those southwesterly winds. Let's take a look at our Middleton Sky Cam around here. We've just got plenty of sunshine, and that has definitely been boosting our temperatures up. 102 today was the high, 100 degrees at uh, North Little Rock, and here's another uh, shot. This is from our VRAD radar, our volumetric radar data, and this is showing you a couple of hours ago as that fire just got started near Ola, and that's the smoke just getting started. And you can see from the a live picture I showed you a moment ago, it has really expanded. The uh, hot weather continues. Heat advisory in effect for northeast and the delta regions of eastern Arkansas again for tomorrow. We are going to see our big sprawling high pressure area flatten out, break down a little bit, and it's going to slide off to the Rockies. That's going to allow the upper level winds to change tomorrow and bring a frontal boundary into the state. Won't be here long because high pressure builds back next week, and that unfortunately is going to bring the heat back as well. Now, as far as rain and thunderstorms are concerned, they are not too far away. We can see them along a frontal boundary slicing through the Plain States. As a matter of fact, showers and thunderstorms, some of them strong today, up around Minnesota, all the way into northwestern sections of Iowa, down and through Nebraska, and from there, all the way down into Kansas. Uh, severe thunderstorm watch in effect for out that, uh, throughout that region, but this low pressure area and frontal boundary will be pushing our way starting late tomorrow. It will be meeting up with Gulf moisture, and that is going to bring in a few thunder showers. Nothing widespread, but anyway, enough to bring a little bit of rain relief from place to place around the state. 99 at Oklahoma City and Dallas at this hour, 103 at Wichita, 102 Kansas City. But look behind the front, Denver at 85 and 87 degrees in North Platte, Nebraska. Downtown, we have a 99 degree temperature reading. <laughs> had not fallen too much. Still very uncomfortable out there with the southwest wind gusting to about 17. Actual temperatures around the state at this hour, 101 at Russellville, 102 at Fort Smith and 100 degrees at Searcy and Batesville with heat index readings between 105 and 111 up at Searcy. That's what it feels like in White County. Here's our future cast run now and it's going to show the front moving into northern Arkansas late tomorrow and tomorrow night we could see scattered showers developing and then again on Friday as that front slows down, stalls out and eventually just washes out by the weekend. 76 mostly clear. Tomorrow, mostly sunny, another very hot day. The front's not going to do much tomorrow, 101. And then 77 tomorrow night with a chance of rain 20%, increasing a little further uh, after midnight across northern Arkansas as the front moves in. And then a 30% probability on Friday they will be scattered, but some areas could get some nice relief. Looks like after that, the heat is back full force Sunday, Monday, and into Tuesday. We got one shot for the next few days. <laughs> All right, thanks, Ned. Well, Arkansas greats Jarius Wright and Greg Childs are in for a jolt as they start NFL training camp this week. Christina Munoz is in Minnesota checking in on our Razorbacks turned pros. She'll join us after the break. They were star high school football players, record-breaking college players, and soon they'll be professional players in the NFL. And Greg Childs and Jarius Wright were both drafted by the Vikings and are now calling Minnesota home. Christina Munoz has followed those Vikings to the land of 10,000 lakes, and she joins us now live from the newsroom of our sister station in Minneapolis, KSTP. Hi, Christina. Hi, Beth and Scott. You know, Greg Childs and Jarius Wright said they had no idea where they would go on draft night. If they're completely honest, they were hoping for the Cowboys, just because Dallas is so nearby. But they were so surprised when they found out they would be going to Minnesota, and now they'll be living about 800 miles north of home here in the state of Minnesota. But, you know, both of them spent time up here for minicamp and rookie camp, and they say that they really like Minneapolis and the surrounding area. It is very different from their home town in Warren, which has a population of about 6,000 people. The metro area here in Minneapolis, about more than 3 million people. And their biggest concern, of course, is the winter. Everyone keeps telling them how cold it's going to be. I can attest to that. I lived through five Minnesota winters. But all in all, they say they're very excited. And we asked them about what were their first impressions of Minneapolis. Here's what they had to say. You know, at first I was, I was a little sketchy about it. Uh, it's my first time being in Minnesota, so uh, it wasn't, it wasn't bad at all after I was there for a little while and got used to everything. Different, a lot of traffic, a lot of people, um, not used to really the traffic, like, it don't matter what time of the day you go somewhere, it's always like a traffic jam or something. 
I can attest to that as well. But Greg says they love to fish, so what better place to be in than the land of 10,000 lakes? Now, tonight at 10, we talked to Greg and Jarius a little bit about what it's going to be like for them to make that transition from college ball to the pros. Hear what they have to say at 10. And tomorrow, we'll be following them to training camp, which is Mankato, Minnesota. And they have to report by 4 o'clock tomorrow afternoon, and training camp begins on Friday. We'll be live with them at 5, 6, and 10 tomorrow night. Beth and Scott, back to you. It is a big change coming, but I think all Arkansas fans would agree they are up to that challenge. They are. Christina, thanks. Well, coming up next in sports, Tyler Wilson and Niall Davis got some face time today on ESPN. Plus a look at some big bass highlights from this year's Carhartt College Series National Championship. And now, sports with Steve Sullivan. Anyone want to do a pig suing before we sign off here? I'll do it. Oh! <laughs> pig pig suing. I, didn't, I thought I was going to have to twist some arms. Uh, I'm impressed. Uh, Niall and Tyler were a big hit with the folks at ESPN today. Both guys looked right at home in that sports center set. Here's what Tyler had to say about the expectation for his 2012 hogs. Well, the expectations are high in our camp, for sure. I think uh, I've made sure that, that uh, the rest of the guys know that. Uh, there's there's no uh, no changing goals here at Arkansas. And uh, you know, we've got both those teams at home. Uh, to get over the hump, we, you know, we got to beat those two teams. And I think everybody knows that. And uh, so we're going to continue to do what we do, uh, prepare, work hard, and, uh, you know, maybe surprise people uh, come, come September. It's a good time to be Tyler Wilson. During his visit to SI Kids, he got a look at the Tyler Wilson bobblehead. Some great news from Niall Davis. He says his left ankle is 110%. Here's Niall on the ankle he broke last year. It's, it's doing good. Um, I have all, you know, my strength back, power back. Um, did great testing in the offseason. Um, I have one more hurdle to, you know, kind of jump over is go through camp and try to get, you know, my first contact, which I'm, I'm ready for. I'm, I'm just anxious, excited to get ready. Both guys looking sharp today. This was championship day at the state junior girls golf tourney. Two Central Arkansas stars met in that title match. Hannah Bakalikas, she needs to sink this putt to extend the match. And it's a great effort, but it rolls past the hole. Your junior girls champ posing with the Mary Perrin trophy is Kaylee Benton of Cabot. And 71 colleges and universities, including four Arkansas schools, are competing in the College Bassmasters National Championship. You're looking at the top Arkansas team, UALR, in seventh place at seven pounds one ounce your first day leader is Oklahoma State at 17 pounds four ounces this is a five day tourney you talk about fishing in this weather for five straight days yeah. they're gonna be worn out by the end of this week that's right but I'm sure they're having fun though. oh yeah they don't do that unless yeah. they're having big fun. stakes in this one okay yep. Shelly thank you take a look at how the stock market closed today and we'll be right back Welcome back to Channel 7 News. I'm Justin Lewis in Yell County. We continue to monitor this wildfire. As you can see behind me, crews still very active here. We also have a lot of ash currently falling down on us. Uh, all these homes around here have been evacuated, but I am here to confirm we've had two structures catch fire, completely destroyed. One, a mobile home that actually someone was living in. The other, police tell me, was an abandoned home. Now we've got a lot of crews coming to some of the other homes in the area to make sure none of this ash that we're seeing falling out of the sky guy starts any other fires in the area. We've actually seen some wildlife running out of these woods as well. We'll have more coming up tonight on Channel 7 Nightside. Back to you. An unbelievable scene unfolding there in Yale County and into Perry County. Justin, thanks. We'll see you at 10. And that does it for us here on Channel 7 News at 6 o'clock. Thanks for being with us. Have a great night. Channel 7 News at 6, brought to you by Cleo's Furniture and USA Drug. Skycams, sponsored by Middleton Heat and Air. When you see news happen, call the free AT&T tip line at pound 77.